Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. someone's house, but you don't have an arrest warrant for them. Woo! Welcome. Finally. We have broken our silence today to finally address this LeBron James whatever you want to call it (laughs) seriously uh this show called mind the game was podcast with jj reddick and lebron james the fastest growing podcast show ever right they have over five hundred thousand subscribers already they got in three weeks or is it four weeks i don't even know um they have produced a total of, I believe, they produced, I think the fourth episode just came out. So yeah, I guess it's four weeks now. But it's really two sessions it's been with uh, J.J. Reddick and LeBron. They just split them into four episodes. So going back and watching what they're actually saying, it is very comical. Um, the first episode, whew, it was rough. It was rough um, because you're dealing with a lot of characters and personalities that don't usually mesh. Meaning that LeBron James, I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> he, said, yeah. he just popped in you're capping i'm like i ain't even said nothing yet you gotta wait till i say something then you come in with the cap you jumped the gun too early with the hate son now here's the thing that people don't seem to get lebron james making this show with jj is a, such a great idea. And it is such a great idea because now this guy who wants to show people he's smart, because a lot of people think he's a dumb player, um, the way he plays the game, he just does one thing, and he wants to show everybody how smart he is about basketball. So he has to pick somebody smart with basketball IQ to sit down with who could have this discussion with him. He couldn't do this with Draymond or anybody else because they're not going to bail him out. They don't really know how. Not that LeBron doesn't know the plays. Like, he knows. He knows plays. He's been in the game 20 years. You're going to know the plays. But they wanted to try to make it, you know, make it look like they were doing something that was so alien to the rest of the world and just fool them with basketball jargon. Like, I know the game, like, I've played basketball, I've seen basketball a lot, but I actually know plays, I know what guys are supposed to do in situations. What I don't have is all of the basketball terminology, but I do possess some of them. So when they go over some of the basketball terminology, most of the anybody who's played in even AAU understands that that terminology and a lot of terminology is just like the word the english language many words mean the same thing let me repeat that many words mean the same thing so you have a play that has a different name but it's also called about three other different names uh, a four out could be called a a one four. It could be called a a five out. Could be called a one four. Different situations. Um, 
a down split screen could be called a slash a slash x you know slash x5 x4 all of these things that have different terminologies they have all plays have like three or four names to them but certain things um when people say like two nine and in the paint that's a very easy one but uh, Kwame Brown brings it up a lot because he played he played the five position. So he play, playing the five a lot, he's going to have to two nine in the paint, which means, you know, that's a three second rule down in the paint. Remember that three seconds. So you only have two point nine seconds to be in the paint. So that's all two nine. And really is is your guarding splits and you guard a man in the normally in the corner for the three. And you're two nine and right there in the paint to try to keep them honest because you're trying to protect against the slant. Which everybody is called splits. Now, let's go over what they were doing. First off, the show starts off. JJ Reddick is acting like he's taking you on a on a adventure. Like, I'm, you're going to learn some stuff today. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, I'm watching it so that you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. Now, here's the thing. J.J. Reddick had the same show on ESPN. Just nobody watched it. Because you had to pay for it. <laughs> he had it on details. ESPN had a show called Detail. And on details, on details, he tells you, because Kobe Bryant used to do it. Kobe used to have his plays. He has certain guests on the show. And you have to be on ESPN Plus to see it. And not a lot of people would pay for ESPN Plus to see the show. So the very first episode is basically a glazing of LeBron James. J.J. Reddick just sat there and praised this guy who basically runs a, the most basic sets you've ever seen in basketball history. They don't run a slew of plays. LeBron James didn't run floppies. And he said he did that his first two years in the league. That I could believe. Because they don't know what to do with him. They know he's fast. They know they just got to get him the ball and give him enough space to create. So having him come off floppies is probably the best thing for him. Because coming into the game, you know, you're learning plays. You're learning, you know, spacing and the, and the way of the game, the flow of it. So I could see Paul Silas having him run floppy screens to get the ball. Um, Floppy, like they've explained on that show, is when a guy is, is normally a two guard or somebody small who's supposed to be at the top of the key is all the way at the baseline. I mean, all the way in the paint. And they're getting ready to get a screen or a double screen to free them up as they run through picks. Reggie, AKA Reggie Miller. <laughs> Reggie Miller is the father of the floppy. He's the floppy king. He will run you through a thousand picks. And he will come floppy to the elbow, floppy to whatever. Okay. So now you guys have a, a great understanding of what that is. So you don't really need to know how it runs or everything. You know from just seeing Reggie Miller what a floppy is. That's the play Reggie runs. So. He's been running it. He's the father of it. Uh, Steph Curry is the new modification of running that play. Uh, Steph don't run it to the elbow. He runs it to the three-point line. 
because he's such a great shooter, that's where he goes when he runs those plays. Ray Allen did it uh, later on in his career. Didn't start off doing it. Now, LeBron James starts off uh, boasting with his ego. He starts bragging on how he could flip a play coming out of timeouts. How he is, the coach said that he is so smart. <laughs> I've never met anybody as smart as you. They're going to say anything that you want to hear, LeBron, because you're going to the NBA from high school. They're giving you the keys. So, yes, they're going to give you these things and these tips. Now, it's funny to me how you sit there and take credit for a 19-point comeback against the Clippers and how you want to shame the coach. Like, yep, it was my decision in the fourth quarter. Yep, I said, no, well, I'm changing that. So, yep, I changed it. When you win a game, is you changed it. What about the games you lost? Did you change it then? Or you just changed it when the games you win? You just override the coach. So basically, you're saying you do whatever the hell you want to do. So how's it the coach's fault when you fail? Now, oh, blessings, blessings to all of you. Now, my thing is, if JJ wasn't too busy glazing LeBron James, he could have asked him real questions. Um, the first episode is basically a throwaway episode. Um, they really was just going over certain points and just getting drunk and drinking wine and toasting. The NBA had a problem with this. But we'll get to that, to that part a little later. And don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Everybody saw do trolls for views. Wow, that's what I'm doing. JJ just wants to get views. <laughs> Well, JJ just did this show. He did this whole show called Details. It was on ESPN. I just told you that. He just did this whole show before. Now they just moved it to YouTube and they got LeBron James on. But this is LeBron James in a partnership with JJ Reddick on his undisputed, I mean, what's it, uninterrupted crap? Now, who watches that? No, LeBron James sounds like a complete moron on this show because he completely sits there and tries to act as if he's smarter than everybody else in the room when it's clear your basketball IQ is all instinctive and in, from playing the game, but you are terrible at, <laughs> at the X's and O's. And you can tell because J.J. Reddick knows the game. He knows what a player is supposed to do, which way they're supposed to go. And he's trying to show all his abilities because head coaching is what he wants. He wants a big one-stop shop and be a head coach in the NBA. So he's always trying to audition his brain. Then LeBron sits there and goes, man, you know, when I think of high IQ, I think of Rondo. I don't know why Rondo ain't on the team. 
You don't know why Rondo ain't on the team. I think maybe he don't want to coach. No, maybe because the nigga keep trying to kill his baby mama and do all kind of crazy shit and keep going to jail. <laughs> you ain't reading the newspaper. You Why you think he ain't in the league? <laughs> you know goddamn well why Rondo ain't in the league. <laughs> I think he just don't want to do it. That mine. No, he'd have been in choked you. He'd have been in smacked somebody else. Dude, keep trying to kill his baby mom every week. Yeah, that's exactly what the league needs, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so many lies that was told. Oh, my God, on this show. This man, one of the biggest lies LeBron told on this entire thing it's when he tried to sit there and he says, I get mad when players come out of timeouts and they don't know to play. That just ticks me off. It should tick you off because you've done it many of times. Coming out of a timeout, they don't know to play because you changed the play. You walk out on the court and go, man, up there, Tyloo just said, we're going to go top side. Yep, we're going to go top side. Yep, top side, then we're going to flip it. Everybody. And then everybody else who don't practice with you, they don't know what the F you talking about. They know what the coach said. And then you ain't communicating with everybody on the court. And the guy was like, well, LeBron running. Like, I went on the team with y'all. <laughs> then the other player be like, just stand there. So there's no communication on the floor. None. LeBron would talk to the people he talked to, and then he'll say, F that, we're going to run this. And what they're going to say, they don't even bring it up to LeBron that they changed the play. They don't even bring it to LeBron. Like, why did you change the play? The coach would never do that. They just kind of, all right, come on in, guys. Here we go. Uh, we go. Yeah, they never bring it up. The man changes the play because he don't like it, and then he wants to change it to something that's complimentary to him. Then when it fails, he don't take no responsibility for it. He sits there and gets all Eric is supposed to. Eric is supposed to, man. I played like crap in that finals in 2011. But Spo, oh, man, Spo, man. He went down there and he studied with Chip Kelly. He came back and, man, that's when we really started to, yeah, we really started to jail. Cause he, used to, he got all those Chip Kelly plays. And he came down, and we just start running those. Ah, the theatrics, the theatrics, the theatrics, the theatrics. J.J. Reddick should have asked him, and they should have had this discussion on the show. And it, it should have been clear. Um, Been a while, Mile High. Glad to see you back. He sat there and said, moving Chris Bosch to the five, Spo was the guy. He tried to get Spo fired. Pat Riley even came out and confirmed you came and tried to get the man fired. At the end of the season, you tried to get the man fired. You blaming Spo and then trying to get D Wade and everybody else to go along with it to get rid of Spo. Getting the team together in a rally to go against the head coach of Pat Riley. He's basically the voice of Pat Riley. Like, we need to get more experienced coaching here. Uh, Spo ain't it. 
why don't you come back? LeBron asked him to come back. Pat, why don't you come on the sideline because you got more respect with the refs and everything. He was like, look, you get paid to play. My job is to hire and fire coaches. Okay? You play ball. That's your job. Do your job. That's all you do. Don't worry about who to coach. <laughs> Man, don't try to get him out there. Right, right. He looked at him crazy. So now you out here capping for Spo, talking about, oh man, like Spo, yeah, that was my guy. Like, you tried to get him fired. Did you forget about that? Then he was like, oh yeah, we changed, and that's how, that's how it went, man. We moved Bosch to the uh, Bosch went to the uh, what do you say? We moved Bosch to the five, and that's when we really took off. You won a chip championship when Bosch was still a power forward. Bosch didn't go to the five till y'all was going for the second championship. You see what I'm saying, man? This dude, you didn't drunk your you didn't drunk your brain cells away. Right, the one where Ray Allen had to save them. That's that's ego. When you keep creating your own narratives, that's ego. That is all ego kicking in. I am going to share the screen with y'all real quick so y'all can understand what we talking about. So y'all won't say I'm lying on the man. A lot of people like to call people liars. Let's look at a very key fact here. Let me get this out of the way. All right, let me zoom it on in for you. Let's go in here. Because the man said Bosch, who was, uh, as you can see right there, Toronto center. He played power forward that year. Then it was center, 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 center. Then he came to the Miami Heat. Here it is. Power forward, the first season. Second season, power forward. He played in 57 games that season. Missed a lot of games. So, I remember that because he was really out. But he came back and played all 57. Oh, yeah, it was it was clear. That was the uh, lockout year, so it was a short season. But he was really hurt, and he got himself in shape and came back and played those 57 games plus then. Then he came to play center. The third year, and that's when they moved him to the center position. And that's when Haslam basically was coming off of the bench. Now, let's bring you to the other element. Bosch moving and shooting the three, they had to respect him because Bosch was out there. We start making him a three-point shooter. Yeah, and then Bosch, you got to respect that. Okay, let's go back. He made it as if Chris Bosch was lighting it up from three, and they had to pay attention to him in the corner, hitting corner threes. All right. They lost in 2010. They won the championship in 2011. All right. These are called three-pointers and three-point attempts. These are So these are your three-point field goals per game. These are the attempts per game. So this is his starting career, right? And once he gets to Miami, the very first year, 
His attempts, 28%, 0.6, 0.2 makes, which means he probably made one per goddamn game, if that. If a barely attempt won a game. Some games he don't even do it. The very next year, one attempt per game, 0 0.3. <laughs> but he's lighting it up, huh, Brian? They are so worried about Chris Bosh shooting the three. They don't know what the hell to do. They can't guard him. He's shooting 28 goddamn percent. But we going to be worried about Chris Bosh behind the damn line. Now, in the 2013-2014 season, after he's been on Miami Heat, one, two, three, four, four years. This is LeBron's last season there. In LeBron's last season, he took a high of 2.8 shooting three Per game, hitting about one per game, or, or sometimes maybe two. But he averaged about three threes a game. So it was in his final year he started to do that. He went up from 28% to 33%. And then when LeBron James' ass wasn't there anymore, that's when he started to shoot the three more. Look at this. 1.4 to 3.8. Then 1.5, he shot 4.2 threes. That's when he started to shoot the three more, when your ass was out of the way. So everything you've been telling us, Bron, has been lies. Or maybe not even lies. You're just drinking too goddamn much. LeBron be talking out his ass. That's all he always do. And notice, if you go back and watch it, when J.J. Redick is talking or asking a question, this dude is so dumb. This is how you know dumb people. They sit there and repeat exactly what the other person is saying. I mean, word for word. He was like, you make a down screen, you up with down screen. Then Jason went to the top. Jason went to the top. <laughs> I mean, he's repeated everything JJ is saying. It sounds it sounds so stupid. If you hear it, it would make you laugh how ridiculous it sounds. He sounds like a, a moron. Then they had uh, Austin Wynn. Got yeah, Austin Wynn. Then they had uh, JJ Barrera. Oh, JJ Barrera. <laughs> he's repeating every word that comes out of JJ's mouth and then he doesn't know something he just agrees then he makes a down screen here yep then he does that yep then he goes over there yep then he moves that yep then he does a back cut yep back cut <laughs> then he does a scram ping down yeah scram ping down yep it is it is the most comical thing you ever wanted to see I am so glad he is making these videos because everybody will get to see in real time how arrogant and how stupid he really is. Dude, you are not Aristotle because you know NBA plays. You've been in the league 20 years. If you had your job for 20 years and you don't know what the hell the job lingo is... <laughs> You shouldn't probably work at your job no more. <laughs> I swear, go back to watching the first episode, second episode. You will watch him repeat J.J. Reddick's words out of his damn mouth consistently.
LeBron James, I'm very curious to know why you did not tell the general public that Shane Battier had to teach you how to read defenses. In 2011, after y'all lost to Dallas, he noticed you couldn't read the defense. This is why your points were so low. This is why your shooting average was so low. This is why you faded away, because you couldn't read defenses. Mm-hmm. Of course, he want to be Kobe Bryant. <laughs> So what's a mamba, Bron? <laughs> That's what I had put it in the song against LeBron. LeBron, your whole damn style is Kobe's. You stole his locker. Read about his life in the papers. All his run in with authority, felonious capers. Now you want to be Kobe Bryant. So what's a mama, Bryant? <laughs> you a player that can't ball right. You play too much 2K. Load him up against the wall. Close his eyes. Since he lied, he cried. Goodbye. <laughs> Look at him. He's a truth for me. What would you do if you was me against LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's in the song. You remember I wrote that song years ago. Y'all still ain't heard it, though. I heard he was a handball athlete with an Akron accent, during fast cars, and he's known for flashing. Listen as I take you back and spit the game about a true lane by the snitch named LeBron James. Knew he was working for the league. Same game, different calls. Man, picture what he said. Oh, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to put that out so y'all can hear it. <laughs> you know y'all ain't getting a notification for this. <laughs> you know how YouTube do. Now, let's get back to this. So after this egregious step, he goes to tell y'all about those who was the most impactful in the game. Now, Here's the thing. And I want to be clear. He was right. He didn't include himself in the most impactful player or most influential in basketball. Did you notice that? Why wouldn't he include himself? Because he knows it's true. But he wants to exclude Michael Jordan. So he was like, well, since I've been tracking the game and since I've been here, it's been Allen Iverson and, you know, since I've been following the game. And since you've been following the game, it's been Allen Iverson and Steph. But Mike, they had nothing to do with that. Michael Jordan is still selling the league right now. That's why you're number 23, you dumb piece of shit. You was number 23 because of Michael Jordan. You was wearing your, your, your arm band like Michael Jordan. You was trying to be Mike. You over there trying to do Space Jam like Mike. You trying to be like everybody. No, no originality.
Yep, no imagination, Vince. He said Michael Jordan won that puffy's house. <laughs> 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 they say the truth come out when you drunk. That's right, T. The truth came out. But him trying to exclude Mike was the funniest thing ever because Mike still sells the league. Every day, they're attaching you to Michael Jordan to try to promote you. It's the funniest thing in the world because I'm like, Stephen A. and Shannon Sharp every day keep talking about Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And it is the stupidest conversation to ever have on the show. It makes no sense. Like, that's a conversation you have maybe one or two times. I can't even really have that conversation anymore because it don't even make sense. You have no argument. Nothing has changed on Mike's side. LeBron could do anything. He could do a 360 from the free throw line. It still ain't going to change Nothing for him. He's already failed. Once he failed in Dallas, it was already over in 2011. Already over. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. When they said impact of the game. So you omit Michael, who Allen Iverson came through and basically took that torch because after Mike left, AI was the guy. It wasn't Kobe. So Kobe never could get that because of the Colorado situation and because of him playing with Shaq. Once Cole was on his own and he became the Black Mamba, he held that down. <laughs> He's winning chips while they waiting for you to grow up. He was in the finals waiting on you. Nike had the puppets and everything. They was waiting for the Kobe LeBron matchup. They were waiting for you. You couldn't get past the Orlando goddamn magic. So now, what do you do on this show? Change the narrative. So now, let's change the narrative to, oh, LeBron James needs, I, well, I didn't have this, so that's why I couldn't do that. Orlando was just this super team. You got a juggernaut right there. They were the first team I've ever seen with a spread offense. What the? <laughs> that's the first team. You seen that had a spread offense? Now Stan Van Gundy's a goat because he beat LeBron. LeBron, y'all lost because you don't have a defensive identity. If you're so smart and you know all the goddamn plays, why the hell on defense you can't guard anybody? Why is everybody always open for threes on the team you're on? Why come your team's defensive efficiencies always go down when guarding the three on your teams that you're on? It's quite unusual. Rashad Lewis was shooting about 60% for three. Turkaloo was shooting three. Jameer Nelson was hitting threes. Um, it was just unbelievable. Why? They were wide open on a pick and roll off the pick and roll. Jameer Nelson's shooting because no one's picking him up. Y'all are sitting back in zone.
Y'all lost in six games, and y'all won like 60-some games that year. LeBron losing one on one everybody. <laughs> D Wade didn't beat him one on one. Right. So many lies in this podcast. It's crazy. So you couldn't read defenses those years. None of those Cleveland years. You couldn't read the defense. So if you couldn't read the defense, It says a lot about the coaches that got fired for trying to work with you. They got Paul Silas out of there, and they brought in uh, Brown. Mike Brown came there, and he's a defensive master. Like, he will jump on you. But he knew he can't do nothing with LeBron. So he knows you don't know how to read the defenses. But they ain't going to say anything to LeBron. He gets to Miami and Shane Battier is like, you don't really know how to read the defenses. I'm going to work with you. This dude, seven, eight years in the league. That's inexcusable. That is inexcusable for you to be in the NBA seven Yeah, seven, eight years, and you don't know the defense. Let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, they're going to keep sabotaging it. They're going to keep sabotaging the views. They're going to try to keep everything down. We already know what they're doing. This, this, this is their game. They want to try to sabotage me as much as possible, so... No notifications flying through. It's it's a mess. Now, let's continue on with uh, what's been happening here. Um, he said, not one, not two, not three. He must be talking about them losses. You know, he got fired for calling out LeBron in, in the film room. They was in the film room, and he's calling out LeBron. And LeBron was like, oh, really? That's my fault? Yep, it's your fault, and you got to fix it. And LeBron was like, nah, you'll see. And it was like, Mia David Black. And like he went to the owners, like, look, he gotta go. He's like, who am I supposed to grab? I'll find you somebody. But he gotta go. Like now. He's got I'm not playing another game when uh he's here. So I'll sit out. And David Black was fired immediately. <laughs> Immediately fired. We all remember that. LeBron ain't going to take credit for that. So he arrogantly says these things. Then right after that, he goes into this. He goes into this imperialist way of saying how it irritates him when other players don't do something. Then says the root after blaming the saying he didn't play well and he played like crap, that they needed more players in order to win. We did have um we needed more pieces to win in 2011. You're in the NBA finals. Against Dallas, an old ass Dallas Mavericks team. It's like they got hot late. 
you got beat by Jason Terry, who came off the bench, who played less minutes than you. You didn't do your job. If your team that you had got to the NBA Finals, you should have had enough to win it. What the hell are you talking about? So you basically just dumped on everybody who was on the team. And that's why House don't like you as it is. Because when he was on the team, you got rid of Eddie House. Like Eddie House was the problem. When he barely played. And when he did play, he was trying to perform. But he can't really get off because you in the way. He got outscored by Deshaun Stevenson. <laughs> Game four. I mean, you got to understand that you never had these type of failures from Jordan in the finals. Like, there's no, no history of it. So the biggest stage, Michael Jordan performs. On the biggest stage, Kobe Bryant excels his game. LeBron James... We're not even going to go there. We're not even going to go there. So now, after saying he needed help, this rubbed people the wrong way. Who now is like, see, this is why I'm glad he's doing that podcast. Because now you get to see the hypocrisy with this idiot who sits there and says such moronic things. So because they lost, which was totally on him. He sit there now saying they didn't have enough pieces. Like, who the hell else do you need? We ain't have enough pieces like we did the second year. Dude, you supposed to be enough. <laughs> like your mama say, when you go into the store, <laughs> like, uh, what was that, Friday, Chris Rock? Mama, this ain't enough. Make it enough. <laughs> Mama, this ain't enough money. Make it enough. <laughs> you, you got enough to do. We paying you this kind of money? Make it enough. You have enough complimentary players. You got to the NBA final, but you and we ain't got enough to get it done. We ain't got enough to beat the old Dallas Mavericks. We needed enough. We need some more pieces. No, you didn't. All right. You supposed to be the man. Michael Jordan was winning with Will Goddamn Purdue and Stacey King. <laughs> Will Purdue, Bill Cartwright, Stacey King. I'm like, did you know what Jordan was winning with? Do you want to see the bench? Who was coming in to back up Michael Jordan? Who was the backup two guard for the Bulls? <laughs> I don't really think they understand that. Who was the backup for Jordan? <laughs> Some more pieces, man. <laughs> we we ain't got enough. He went in with Bill Winnington, <laughs> Judd Bushler. <laughs> you kidding me? Now BJ was the backup point guard.
Right. And that's like, man, you need all these pieces. I mean, we have enough pieces, man. I if we'd have had enough pieces, that would have did it. Yep. Yep. That's what we need. More pieces. Second year we did it. Bison Dele. <laughs> I know, just full of the excuses. That's all he did the whole episode. Instead of blaming his goddamn self. Don't tell me about AD Blue the game. Look at this dude from the beginning. Look at this. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Look, everybody blowing back. He was old man in the back. <laughs> What you doing way back there, bum? Those, the game back here. Why are you back there, bum? Uh oh, here come the bum. I got it. Oh, but I don't. Want. <laughs> I'm the king. I'm more than an athlete. Blip, blip. Oh, no, God. I didn't get him a body bag. <laughs> um, this bum got no moves. Look at where he, how he's standing. Look at this approach. Look, he rolling all over the floor, just falling all over himself. <laughs> Look at this flopper. Oh, I'm going to throw myself on the floor. Oh. Boom. Look, throw himself on the floor. Watch, he running to this man's drink. I'd have spilt and turned the whole thing up on him. Bum. Better come get y'all dinosaurs some help. The brontosaurus is tied. <laughs> Somebody come get this man. Go, some get y'all old man and bring him home, man. Bring him home, dog. Uh oh, there he go. He's going down. He's weak in the knees. <laughs> old man Braun. Old man Braun. <laughs> that never gets old. It never gets old. It just shows you. How pathetic it is. And it's funny to me to see J.J. Reddy go over plays that he knows LeBron James don't can run. <laughs> he don't run those plays ever. I'm like, you know he don't run these plays. What the hell are you going over them for <laughs> with him? All he's sitting there doing is agreeing with you because he don't run these damn plays. <laughs> He's sitting there like, and yeah, and then they they run across over here. They got a top pitcher here, and then they go to the point. Yep, go to the point, and then he right there puts uh, they run a double split. Yep, double splits, <laughs> and then you know he got Gervad setting the pick. Gervad setting the pick. Yep. <laughs> He didn't know what JJ was talking about at none of these damn times. That's why he keep repeating it. He keep repeating everything JJ is saying because he doesn't know a damn thing. Bro, that's all he said. Yep. 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 Then he started repeating everything JJ just said. I didn't know this means Republican dude said, you got on a Republican shirt. I was like, I do? It says, live American, die American. I don't know. Did a Republican make the shirt? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they political history was. I said, hey, that's a nice shirt. Live American, die American. Shoot, I'm going to watch Civil War. Ooh, that's tomorrow, baby. One more day. And that's all you go going to see is, what kind of American are you? <laughs> Pop! <laughs> Get blown smooth up. It's all about silver water, Bob. 
So that ended the first session, right? So they go into the next session where LeBron gets even more arrogant. Now the NBA saw that first, what they saw, and they didn't like LeBron having all the wine bottles on there and promoting drinking the kids. You know, everybody watching the podcast show, they was like, hey, you can't have the wine bottles out there. It's looking bad. So they got they got a call by the league saying, LeBron, it's cool that you, you know, you're drinking wine and stuff, but this is not a good look. All the kids are not, why is LeBron getting drunk? He didn't, he's reading the comment section and everybody in the comment section is talking about how LeBron is getting drunk. So on the next episode, they decide to put the shit, put the wine bottles. They ain't decide to stop drinking. <laughs> okay, they ain't stopped getting drunk. Now, now you know you can't stop LeBron from getting drunk. So now the, the liquor bottles are all under the table. And they pouring like liquor under the table, <laughs> bringing the glass up and sitting the glass up there and having the water sitting there. Knowing Le- that ain't water with LeBron thing. That's some tequila. And he's sitting there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because <laughs> the league didn't like the image that that is showing. LeBron James getting drunk and talking basketball. So he can blame it on the alcohol. Yeah, so that's what he did. Now it gets even more interesting because LeBron James goes on this episode and basically claims that not only today's game, like he's blaming the game. That's what really blew my mind. He's blaming the game and saying, do you think everybody switched too much? Yep, switched too much. <laughs> He's blaming everybody for the switches. And he talking about how the game has evolved. The game has not evolved. It has devolved. And the reason why it's devolved is because everybody's running the same goddamn plays. And they made it more offensive and made it less defensive. So it doesn't mean that the game has evolved. It means that they've handcuffed the damn defense and said, okay, we're going to handcuff you and put one arm behind your back. And then we'll let you play with one arm and let then you got to guard these guys now. You can't hand check them. You can't do anything. You could just stand there and just let them score points. We want them to score points. So everybody's running spread, pick, and roll. So you could throw all these other plays really out of the fucking window because everybody's running spread, pick, and roll. You could hook the defender. Exactly. You could do all of these things. But all of a sudden, now it isn't good enough. Hit the like button, good people. Man, I'm giving y'all all all this good stuff. Y'all need to hit the like button. Light it up and strike it up. Woo! Hit the like button. It's free. It's free.
Uh, well, of course. JJ was also on details. Like they did this. Uh, details was also with uh, JJ Reddick. So what they decided to do was steal the details whole format. Uh, and now they got a blackboard now to draw on plays. And he wants to do this with LeBron James. LeBron James chose J.J. Reddick because J.J. Reddick is the perfect guy to do it because J.J. knows plays better than probably most of the players that play. So this is what LeBron want to do is try to show people he's smart because <laughs> he knows plays he's supposed to know. If you don't know what a spread pick and roll is, you shouldn't probably be in the league because that's all the game is right now is spread pick and roll. Every team is doing spread, pick, and roll, spread, pick, and roll, spread, pick. It's sick. So if you watch an NBA game, it's not complicated to see what the hell they're running. In the video I did years ago when I said, only play LeBron runs is a four out, <laughs> which they called it basically a five out on the show. They said, oh, well. Remember the five, they ran a five out. Like, yeah. We know what a five out is, a four out. We we know what that is. It's really four out because the four shooters are on the corners. The two corner shooters and the two on the elbow and the guy at the top. Normally, he gets the ball inside and the guys on there is a four out. But since LeBron is bringing it up, they call it a five out because now he's outside of the three-point line. That's all it is. It's no, nothing complicated. It's really common sense. You can name it any. It's called different things in different players' lingo. That doesn't change. Yeah, my high school coach told me that we're going to run this play till you get tired. And I don't know why coaches stop running plays when they see it work. Well, they're very opposite players. You see... A floppy down, <laughs> two, like I said, they call it a two chess. It's the same thing. We already explained what a floppy is, man. Floppy is nothing but coming off the what they call a low pick and roll, a double pick and roll, a double screen, or um, coming off a screen out of the paint, mostly done by a guard or two guards. Well, I, I don't understand. JJ sitting there trying to draw plays to show people he's a coach and he can do this as he's coaching his son's AAU team. No, LeBron James just sucks defensively. When you play defense and you don't play at a level with any intelligence of communication because you don't practice. This is what practice is for. Practice is, it doesn't make sense for you to just play with your homeboys and the three of y'all play and just say, oh, well, we're the starting five, so we're going to play. Okay, what happens when that guy gets hurt and the other guy got to come in? But he practices with, with his unit that he practices with, which ain't on the floor. So now you got a mixed unit on the floor where these guys ain't practiced with these guys. And that's the Lakers or any team LeBron has ever played with. So they got to just figure this out on the fly on where this guy likes to be, where he wants the ball and all of this stuff. And will LeBron work with him? And when he's on the court, he's really only working with two people. 
So if I'm on the court and I'm the Lakers, like let's take last night, for instance. There's no AD. So we know if LeBron's on the court with Anthony Davis, we know exactly which way he wants to play this. Right? But he ain't on the court with Anthony Davis. So his everything about him shifts and pivots. So who's he going to trust in these situations? Depends on the situation at hand in the game. He's going to play two-man ball with himself and Austin Reeves. He's going to trust Austin Reeves to shoot the ball more than he would D'Lo. But Austin Reeves is on that floor. He's giving it to Austin Reeves. If Hachimura is in the paint low, he's going to try to dish it off to Hachimura because he will go up and finish with a dunk. So Reeves would get it in Hachimura. Nobody else is getting that ball from LeBron James if those two guys are on the floor. You have to recognize his targets and what he wants to do and try to take those away and force him to have to make a decision to go elsewhere. You got to recognize personnel and knowing how they play. That's how he plays. I know that because I've watched his game enough. I know exactly what the moron's going to do. So I know exactly what he's going to perform on the court, when who he's going to go to, who he's going to trust in certain situations. Now, they were down a lot, so now he's got to really need somebody who can shoot the three besides him. And he doesn't want to shoot threes because he don't want to blow where his percentage is. He wants to stay over 40% shooting for three for the season. How could he compliment his teammates' games? When you're not complimenting your teammates' games, all you're sitting there doing is doing a glazing show. This is what the show turns into a, a glazing show. And then for no goddamn reason, Mav Carter shows up. What is Thag, I mean, Mag, Mav Carter doing on the show that's when it started to go left and and when you don't need a eight minute intro of you writing plays when you're gonna do that on the goddamn show anyway. That does nothing for the audience. The audience is not there to hear you talk about and draw plays on a board for 10 minutes before the show starts. Mav Carter <coughs> talking about Steph can't play defense, but Steph locked down LeBron by picking him, <laughs> by picking the ball off. I mean, Mav Carter is just a guy who played high school ball because his daddy played high school ball. That's it. <clears throat> he made the high school team. He's irrelevant. Irrelevant.
Uh, I guess he realized he ain't. He's not more than an athlete. He realized he's just an athlete. So they have eight minute intros. <laughs> Trying to do X's and O's. For what? Then they talk about the growth of women basketball. When LeBron James don't promote women basketball at all, except for him going on a tweet. Man, Caitlin Clark, you amazing. Man, wow. <laughs> LeBron James, has, has he ever been to a game? Kobe Bryant did more for women's basketball than any of you. His daughter was playing and was talking about going there. So Kobe was at these games with his daughter. He was going around promoting women basketball. He was coaching the women's team. Because of his daughter. He was doing more for the game. I remember when it's Dana Taurasi, Sue Bird, Candace Parker. They was like doing it. <laughs> oh my God. This this dude, man, I don't know what they're gonna do. This thing has turned boring already. After about the first hour, because they've only done two hours. Uh, what do I like about the show? Hmm. Uh, that's a very good question. What do I like about this show? I like the fact that it's going to give LeBron James the opportunity to expose himself. I love that. Because his arrogance, he can't hold it in. And he ends up saying things that are very narcissistic and very, very stupid. And it's going to expose to the whole world what we already know. I like the fact that, and I wish they would have expanded on that because LeBron didn't even know until J.J. Reddick found out Oscar Robinson had to sue the NBA so that he could get free agency. There was no free agency in basketball, and Oscar Robinson didn't feel that the team should own a guy like that. They shouldn't be able to own a, a, a player that long. that the players should have a choice. So <clears throat> <clears throat> like Kirk Flood, Oscar Robinson sued, he sued the, uh, sued the NBA for free agency. And once he sued for free agency, that became it. Yeah, well, of course he is. If whoever's going to trend, LeBron's going to sit there and glaze. That's all he's doing. All of this is is a glaze show 
You got Mav Carter sitting there looking like a hobo, just sitting there, just in the show for no reason. There's no place for you here. They they've only done two episodes. They literally have done two episodes and they split them into four. LeBron came there for two days. And out of these two days, this is what they got. No, he, J.J. Reddy looked like a little kid who's so happy to be in a room with LeBron James. Then he shows LeBron a play that he didn't even score on when he tried to, he made LeBron slip and fall. He goes behind the back and pull up for a jump shot. Like, look, I got you. And if I had hit that shot, I would have had a highlight reel. So LeBron, since Draymond called him out for him being, you know, part of the team of uninterrupted, and you haven't sat down and done a podcast interview with him, he comes out and says, oh, well, this is what we could do. Let's talk about Draymond's superpower. And what Draymond could do to the court and what he does for the Warriors. <laughs> oh my God. You know, now we got to glaze Draymond Green now. <laughs> you see how that works? Everything about this guy is a farce. That's why he couldn't do this for himself. Kobe didn't need nobody on the show. Kobe did the show by himself. Because Kobe knows plays. If LeBron is so smart and he's such a savant, pass that, slide that pad over to LeBron and say, all right, LeBron, you draw the play. We don't let you draw the play, LeBron. Draw it up. Um, 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 I think an X was here. Um, uh, an O go there. And um, yeah, it, like I was lined up here. Um, this is, um, it's more like a drag, horns, right, horns. Yeah, we running horns. Uh, Man, LeBron can't draw up no goddamn play. All he can draw up is high pick and roll. You slide that dude a board to write it up, he's done. What could he bring to the table to change the narrative of anything? He's never been that guy. When you've never been that guy that changes the narrative, you don't move the needle in any way. You can mentally get taken out of a game. That's not ideal. It isn't. It's just not ideal for you to be. What you're doing is standing in your own way.
Not really. No. I mean, my thing is, what plays has this man done? This man just so boldly sat there and said, yeah, we came back and won because I said forget what Ty, what uh the coach said. Yeah, D. Ham. Yeah, forget him. I overrule that. So you overrule D. Ham. <laughs> you overrule D. Ham. How are you going to overrule the coach and when you win, come back from 19? That's because you overruled him. But when y'all lost, was did you overrule him then? Okay, so when they talk about fire D. Ham and why the switches ain't happening and, and why he makes substitutions, why don't you say, hey, these are the guys I wanted on the floor. That's why he didn't make the substitution. Why don't you do that for d -Hab? You keep your mouth shut. And don't tell the people the truth. What's up with that? It's bad. It's bad behavior. It's very poor attitudes. It's very poor delivery. It's just poor, period. Everything about it, it reeks of desperation. Mm -hmm. Well, when you figure that out, then the rest of the world will figure it out. Because it's quite clear to everybody else. <laughs> He's like, Steph Curry, he Patrick Mahomes. No, you Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> you, Patrick Mahomes, you the one that they giving everything to. They laid the red carpet out for you, bub, and yet you still dropping an A. Now, he's got he's got his two, three championships early. We're going to see what happens now. But now they didn't add this new tackling rule to open things up for him. So he can go out there. Now they want to protect him because his numbers are down. We got to, Johnny, we got to boost up uh, Patrick Mahomes' numbers. He was having a whole lot of second halves and not scoring. That team won a Super Bowl when they had like six games. They ain't scoring the second half. How the hell you can't score in the second half of an NFL game now? <laughs> The way the offense is now. And you can't score? And you going to compare that man to Tom Brady? Man. Y'all don't get the hell up out of here. So he going to compare him to him. It's like, dude, come on. You can't be serious.
So, the play-in tournament. Let's talk about that, LeBron. Let's talk about the play-in tournament. You should know because this is where you've been living. <laughs> the in-season tournament is a way to expand and make a mini playoff for teams that was just on the cusp. And it basically tells you if you're seventh and eighth, you had no shots of winning an NBA championship. That's what it says. So we're going to make you play some extra games just for qualifying for the playoffs. <laughs> Playing 82 games so that you could qualify to make the playoffs to be one of the top eight seeds, right? So you're one of the top eight seeds. You've done that. You're seven. Now you got to go into a gumbo pot where you can be eliminated <laughs> by these other teams just when you played the whole season to get here. So all you got to do is really not even be seven, just go all the way to 10th and chill, <laughs> just play in the play-in tournament, and you'll get right back to where you was. So why kill yourself to be seven and eight? Well, you could just do that at the end of the year. Sounds really stupid now. They invented this to protect LeBron James so that LeBron James could always be in the mix. The play-in tournament started in 2020. Twenty 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 one. In the first year of the plan, right? Right, that's what I said. It was created for LeBron James. So in the first season of the plans, LeBron James, did the Lakers play that first year of the plan against Golden State? So the first year, the Lakers was in the play-in. And they played against the Golden State Warriors. I think that's when LeBron hit that three. That was 2020. The very next year, because they lost to Phoenix, I believe, that year. And Phoenix played the Bucs, and the Bucs won. So they got eliminated in the first round. The next year, 2022, what happened to the Lakers in 2022? They didn't even make the playoffs. 
Were they in the play-in in 2022? Nope, they missed the playoffs. So they didn't even make the play in in 2022. LeBron quit at the end of the season because they was out of it. So they didn't even make the play in or the playoffs when they had three all stars and three top NBA 75. So that didn't happen. So that's 2022. 2023. The Lakers was in the play-in. Right? So 2023, they come out of the play-in and go to the Western Conference Finals. Criminally, but they did. So they were back in the play-in. 2024, LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers are in the what? Play-in. So... You have not been since they've given you that spot where y'all with the pandemic and all that. You have not been near the top five, top six teams in four years. You have been in the plans. Every year of its existence. It's been there four years. You've been in there three out of the four years of its existence. And three of the years, you were not even qualified for the playoffs. So I'm just stating a fact. You really have no relevance in today's game. You're a relic, an old relic that they're using to try to push a narrative. No, ain't no a Trump shirt. This is not Donald Trump. Do you see a Trump? None Donald Trump shirt would say Trump. This says live American, die American. Ah! It's about civil war, baby. Civil war is tomorrow, baby. And we're, we're getting ready for war. We got to lock it down. Y'all going to have me over there with the pistol out. You're American, huh? What kind of American are you? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> pa, <laughs> be taking people right out. Tomorrow we at Civil War. Anybody but Sleepy Joe. <laughs> Man, they're going to call me again. I'm going to be like, you can forget that. Gonna be, hey, how you doing, Doc? Hey, vote for me. It's your man, Joe Biden. I won't let you down. I'm going to get your jobs. I'm going to get your money. I'm going to get you everything you need. I'll be, oh, no, you ain't. <laughs> oh, Chris, he said, 
do more old man Braun series. Oh, I'm gonna do something and think y'all gonna like it. I might do something to really expand this so you would see it in a whole different light. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, LeBron was next to terrible on the show, but I'm so glad he's doing it. It really makes me feel good that he's doing it because he's going to expose himself. He's going to do all the work. He's doing all the work. I don't have to do anything. He just makes it very easy for me to point the finger and say, see, Look, Yeah, well, when people make up their mind that they're going to do something and they don't do it, it's quite clear the direction that they're going in. No, Oscar Robinson has sued the NBA for free agency. It took six years to get done. And when he sued for the six years and everything, uh, players had to compensate, you know, for that loss. So they had to give up a player. So the Lakers, the Lakers had to give up a player and they had to give up draft picks. And they didn't know how to set up free agency at the time. So they didn't never have to deal with that before. So now they had to compensate for that and they had to give up uh, draft picks for a certain player from the Lakers. And that's how the Lakers were able to, to uh, acquire uh, what's his name? Who did they get? The Lakers got. Who is the Lakers? They took that pick and got Magic Johnson. That's how they was able to get Magic. Was through the whole Oscar Robinson trade. They had to compensate. And then the Lakers ended up getting those picks. So him fighting for free agency led to all of this. That pick landed the Lakers uh, their dynasty. Now, that was the, probably the best thing ever said on the show, but they didn't expand and go in on it. They just, like, I thought they thought that was interesting. LeBron didn't have any take on it whatsoever and just said, wow, uh, wow. And then that's it because he doesn't know anything really about the history of the game. So he just couldn't expand on it, so it just died on a vine. Well, in this game, you're surrounded by people that doesn't have your, your best interests in mind when they're doing things. So if people don't have your best interests at stake when they're going about doing their business and handling things the way they're doing it, then you, you got to be saying to yourself, what's the point, right? The hell are you doing it for?
Uh, I don't think the Milwaukee Bucks are going to go that far this year, even if uh, Giannis didn't get injured, you know. Well, I never stated that. Um, what I was stating back then was something different. I was talking about the state of the game. That's what I was talking about. Uh, Kobe Bryant didn't like Rich Paul. He didn't like him hanging around. He didn't like pretty much Mav Carter. He didn't like none of those dudes. Those are LeBron's flunkies. So that's what I was talking about. Well, there wasn't a lot of people switching teams at the uh, trade deadline this year. The lowest amount of players switched this season because of that new CBA ruling that's going to stop these teams from bouncing players. So LeBron had to play with what he got. He ain't like that either. Plus, they so strapped for cash because LeBron bankrupts a team every time he goes there. The Lakers shot 597 more free throws than their opponents last year. That's what got them into the plan. So what's going to happen this season? Another 500 shots? They shoot like 40 a game. I remember they shooting 40, the Los Angeles free throw shooters. <laughs> yes, I use StreamYard. Clippers on a winning streak. Well, they better get it together before the playoffs hit. This is the last week for the NBA regular season, so Knicks will make it to the finals. <laughs> you mean Eastern Conference Finals? Because <laughs> that's about it. I mean, if that, you know, well, they've been running a lot of stunt blitzes, <laughs> which I call a stunt blitz like the NFL, when they double it, all it is, this blitz is nothing but a double. That's it. It's a double team. That's it. So they just come and double Brunson a lot to get the ball out of his hands. That's how you, that's what they've been doing to him. 
Yeah, I mean, Julius was good because people would stupidly not double Brunson, and I'd be like, dump it to Julius Randle. <laughs> I want him to beat us no matter what. Well, Mac Mills was probably high, Lee. He's probably high as a kite. OG is the key. Oh, boy. Here we go. Well, what happens when the key don't fit the lock? Then what? <laughs> We're going to see in them playoffs. <laughs> That's why they play the game. You're more physical. How you guys are more physical? You're the softest team in the league, Magnus. <laughs> Y'all the softest team in the league. AD, soft, <laughs> soft as wet tissue. Ain't no damn way you talk about some we more physical. How the hell you both? <laughs> Y'all the most physical team in the league. Man, get out of here. Come on, Mac Business. Put that Mike Tyson down. You smoking that Mike Tyson. You hit that hard. Man, Mac Business hit that Mike Tyson. It's got him all messed up. What's up, Will? So AD is physical now. <laughs> they got to keep begging him to go to the paint. Come on, man. You troll. LeBron ain't no physical guy. He just runs into people. Running the little point guards. Come on, man. Stop. Y'all shooting all those free throws, but yet, y'all, where y'all at? The bottom, ninth place. Y'all damn near 10th. Y'all tired with Golden State, really? Y'all just played one more game than them. Who's more physical? Everybody in the league? <laughs> Compared to y'all? Are you kidding? Philly's more physical. You want to talk about the West? Shoot, name who all in y'all division. The Clippers is more physical than y'all. The Denver Nuggets is more physical than y'all. How do, when you look at points in the paint and you look at a team that scored more points in the paint, the Lakers is, is getting outworked and outbeat in the paint. The Miami Heat is definitely more physical than y'all. So how y'all shooting more free throws than these people? Don't make sense. Mac is trolling, y'all. <laughs> right, shoebox. Oh, shoebox is more physical than AD. Oh, you know it. But, yep, 
Well, let me get out of here, man. Shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life, Ticket TV, The Dreamers Pro, Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Welcome to HD IITV. I'm out the door.